Oh my god, there's so many. Help me. This year I decided to take a shot at participating in Ludum Dare, which just happened the other weekend. For those of you that don't know what Ludum Dare is, it's a game jam that runs for 48 hours. And from concept to hosting your game for everyone to play, you have 48 hours to do all the programming, art, music, sound effects, everything. It's a really fun way to test your skills and also put you in a situation where you don't have to worry about long-term project sustainability, you can just focus on building gameplay. So I'm going to tell you a bit about my approach and how I made a game in 48 hours. With game jams, they usually provide some sort of theme to base your game around. And while you don't have to use the theme, it's kind of cool to see how all these different people interpret it. And so for this year, the theme was Keep It Alive. Now, the theme was announced around Friday night for me, and so I got myself a drink and I started to write down a couple ideas that came to mind. Maybe we want to keep something alive like a tower defense game or protecting a king or the planet. Maybe we want to keep an animal or a creature alive, like a Tamagotchi game. Or maybe it's more like a fire and you need to keep it spreading. There are a lot of ideas I had, and I actually couldn't really nail one down for almost an hour, which in Game Jam time is a while. And so it was around this point I was starting to get a little bit worried, until I finished my drink, and I thought to myself, well what if I made a game where you just have to keep drinking? Yeah, you win by drinking too much, and you lose if you don't drink enough. And in this case, you would be keeping your buzz alive. Oh my god, this idea is so stupid it could work. And with time running out, I latched onto this idea because I just needed to start working on something. With an idea in mind, the first thing to do was to start a new Trello board and list out as many ideas as I could to get started. This helps organize your thoughts together, and without wanting to waste any more time, I started a new 2D Unity project and got to work on character movement. I settled on doing a top-down shooter. With only 48 hours, you have to kind of pick a genre that you think you can maximize gameplay out of, and I didn't really want to do a high score based game, like an arcade style, so in my mind I wanted to make some sort of twin stick shooter that actually had a win condition and you could beat. In order to do a twin stick shooter, you need to be from a top-down view and you need to be able to move in any direction. Once I could move in all directions, I had the camera follow the player and moved on to the next feature. You can't have a twin stick shooter without shooting, so I added a weapon attached to the player, and I rotate the player based on the position of the mouse. When you click, you should be able to fire a projectile in the direction you're facing, and at this point you pretty much have your core functionality down. With the shooting mechanic in place, you would now need a target to shoot at, so I made a really basic enemy that just looks at the player's position and constantly heads toward that, and I added collision detection handling so the enemy would get stopped at walls and would understand when it's bumping into the player. When bullets collide with the enemy, it does damage to the enemy and they can die. I also added a really simple health bar, and when the enemy collides with the player, then your health reduces, which is also going to be your intoxication meter. And then using the sprite renderer to just flash colors on hit, and also Unity's particle system to create a death effect, this was my final product at the end of night one. It was around 2.30 in the morning, and after several hours of work and a handful of drinks by this point, it's quarantine, you know? I was pretty satisfied with the foundation of the project. So I was off to get a couple hours of sleep before waking up early and keeping the marathon going. My plan for day two is to get the entire game loop in place, so that Sunday I could focus on art, music, sound effects, and any last minute polish. The core game loop idea is you fend off a wave of enemies, the shopkeeper spawns in the shop, you can purchase upgrades and drinks to consume, drinks act as your health, and once you max out your intoxication meter, you win. If you take too much damage or you take too much time in a wave, you'll become sober and you'll lose. I also decided at this point, the better you're doing and the higher your intoxication meter is, the harder the game will become, and the game would start enabling all these screen effects that would make it really hard to shoot, which should make sense given the context. So I created a shop and I set up a bunch of bounding walls to create an arena to fight in, and I also added a combo system so that if you consecutively land shots, it will increase your combo count, but if one of your bullets hits a wall, then your combo gets reset. And it will take your highest combo at the end of a round and calculate that to give you money to buy stuff. At the end of the round, the store will populate with one of two different types of guns, a fully automatic and a burst fire, as well as one staple drink that's there every single time that will have differing cost and intoxication amounts. On the end of the store, there's a button that starts the next wave and closes the shop. 
How I handled doing all the screen effects was I utilized Unity's universal render pipeline. That was a lot of U words. This gives you access to the post-processing stack, which gives you access to the filters basically you can put on top of your game, like bloom and chromatic aberration. They have something like a fish lens that I use to zoom in and out, vignettes to darken the view of your scene, a whole bunch of really cool things. And basically at different intoxication levels, the intensity and the amount of effects that are enabled will differ. Day 2 had a lot of back-end work of handling multiple weapon types, multiple drink types, having the actual game loop from start to finish mostly completed, having all the effects generating, and being able to transition between effects, building out the shop and the level and how the enemies work. There was still so much work to do, but it was close to 18 hours I put in, and my brain was pretty much fried, so I called it a day, and I was going to take a look in the morning of where the project stands and what really needs to get cut to finish on time. You know, we've really done a lot, but, uh, oh my god, there's so much to do. So the third day was going to be all about polishing and adding aesthetics, uh, but that's not how it always pans out. So now we need to make some drastic cuts, but first I need to make sure the game loop is fully finished. To give the game more variety, I added two new enemy types, one that spits at you from long range, and one that doesn't chase you until you get within its vision. I then took some time to add tooltips to the shop items, because I thought that was really essential. I was really pushed for time, so I spent as little time as possible on the art assets, and I updated them a bit to just give the game a little more character. I quickly made a main menu that you could also walk around and serve almost like a tutorial, as well as when you die, a menu that brings you back to the main menu. And at this point, we were in a really good place, but we still hadn't finished the game loop. Like, there was no way to win the game. There was only a few hours left, and I hadn't done sound, music, or any balancing, and I have to finish the game. So that was priority, finishing and winning the game. So you would obviously win by filling up your intoxication meter, but now, once you fill that up, it triggers an event. You can no longer buy anything from the shop because you're at max health, and when you start the event, four nests spawn in the corners of the room, and these nests will periodically spawn enemies. You have to quickly locate and kill all four nests before you get swarmed by the ever-increasing amount of enemies. And once you kill the last one and all the enemies in the room, it spawns the queen of the bugs. The queen shoots really fast. Oh my god, I'm gonna die, run! And after a few seconds, she'll teleport randomly across the map. Once she's down, you'll get a congratulations message from the bartender, and you've beaten the game. With the game loop finally finished, I now had to quickly move on to music and sound. So first up was music. Ah, yeah, oh, we could do something like, ah, uh, yeah, forget this. I was running out of time, and composing music is not my strong suit, so let's do sound effects. So I use BFXR, which is a free sound effects generator. It's not the greatest, but it does offer a lot of versatility, and it's perfect for a game jam setting like this. I quickly wired up the sounds in the game, and with just a few minutes left, I built and deployed to itch.io and submitted my entry to Ludumdare. If you'd like to try the game yourself, I have a link in the description below. It is a web deployment, so you don't need to download it, but if you have a Windows machine, there is a download for Windows available as well. Overall, if you haven't tried any type of game jam, it doesn't have to be Ludum Dare. There's tons that are going on all the time. I would definitely give it a shot. It's a fun little challenge, and if you're already mid-project on something, it's even better to do it then, because it kind of breaks up your day-to-day, -day and it, I found it can kind of refresh you and get you past any blocks that you might be experiencing or burnout. And if you think this idea is cool, but you don't know really where to start, I do offer other tutorials about Unity, and so that would be a good place, but... There's a lot of resources out there. I would just get started today. So with that said, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and subscribe.